But uh, if you were to search for, uh, right, <laughs> right. So if you were to look a, a couple of weeks ago on Google, uh, you would you would find uh, there was a link. Um, you know, when you just put LeBron James in, it would take you to a website that would ask you to install a Flash Player update. And we all know how great Flash Player updates are, and you see it in the news all the time. So you you want to get the latest greatest. So when you download that, um, bam. So you know you know what's funny is we're looking at uh, we're looking at examples of malware and. It's kind of funny because I don't really think there's any other profession where you spend a lot of time looking at like the worst case scenarios of things, except for maybe doctors. Now, I always think that looking at malware like this is the uh, the example, like the classic, it's the doctor's time to go look at uh, pictures of what happens at SCD days or something like that. So th let's go with Daryl Stingley here. Does anybody know who Daryl is? Five people. So. I, I felt bad because, you know, like we've said several times, most of the most of the stuff that's used for like trending top, like like this, this malware search um, poisoning, are pop culture stuff. And we look at the list of these things. I'm like, I don't know who any of these people are. One of them ended up being like an LPGA player, and this guy apparently took the hardest hit ever in the uh, the NFL. And you know, being a, a computer nerd slash hacker type, I I don't really know what the NFL is. So. This actually happened on Tuesday. We wanted to show you a more recent example. So if you were to put his name into Google, you'd get a uh, site that redirects you that, uh, that installs malware that does this. And uh, it, it, it's pretty well documented that uh, it's malware. And if you notice, for the, for the Freedom of Open Source Advocates, ClamAV does not catch this. So, yeah, that, no. So you take that same term and go over to Twitter, You'll notice there's a, there will be a whole lot of people that, that well, there's a whole lot of uh, links or you know, discussion about them. And there's a, there's a lot of different URLs, but they all take you to the same kind of site at, at YouTube. And if you notice over on the right-hand side, uh, they use this video of Daryl to, uh, uh, to promote Lindsay Lohan porn. Which, uh, although I'm not happy with, it's better than you know, the Justin Bieber stuff we find. So they, they, they even get uh, uh, clever about this and they'll, use, uh, they'll, they'll embed these videos and they'll put overlays over the videos it's like, and this one says due to copyright uh, in YouTube terms of service we can't upload the whole video here go to this website uh, and get instead and apparently people follow this stuff uh, and you know you'll, you'll get pwned. So uh, in, in, in our last example we have three different accounts talking about three different trending topics with three different URLs, but when you, you follow them all, they all lead you to a .cn site. And as everybody knows, you don't click on anything in .cn. And if you do, bad things happen. So, without further. Got it. So, you know, a couple of the, 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 the other examples that, that David was just showing were, you know, some on, on, on Google, uh, some on, on, on Twitter. Uh, what's interesting the relationship between the different ones. Uh, you know, you saw an attack going from, from Google to YouTube, uh, you know, from, from Twitter to YouTube, uh, and really the, the interrelations that are, that are happening. I mean, people using these terms to, to take you to a malicious site, people using these terms to, to take you to a spam site, also using it to poison uh, YouTube clips and to get them up, you know, whether they, they be uh, porn or, or otherwise. So, you know, as we saw earlier, you know, over the, the snapshot that we examined, only 1% of the results were to Twitter. But, you know, we, we talked about kind of why that was, because of the lack of, of actual ranking, right? So, because we were really kind of going to it from the eyeballs of, a, of an, a user. If you come online and you search for a term, you get top search results. So that's all we, we examined. We looked at the top search results. And in, in, in Twitter, you know, for an, if you're an attacker uh, trying to reach eyeballs, it's actually a little inefficient for you. It's a little inefficient because you don't have that opportunity to make your uh, stuff go higher in the ranking. Uh, so when it comes to Twitter, we want to take a look a little bit closer at, at what actually is going on. You know, even though from a, a viewpoint of a random user clicking, uh, you know, your chances are, are a little bit lower, uh, what else is, is taking place uh, in that network? And so we, we spent some time looking at uh, the different characteristics and types of, of Twitter accounts. We, we spent some time looking at uh, if we connect to the, the Twitter stream, and we did this from, from two standpoints. One was uh, through the, the streaming API and getting a view of kind of almost real time a sample of all the tweets that are happening. Uh, the other is through kind of whitelisted API key access, um, being able to come back and query uh, accounts to ask for particular information. 
And so what we're able to see is, you know, for any particular account, uh, how many times they've tweeted, uh, how many people are following them, uh, how many people uh, they're following. I mean, you think about Twitter, there's really only three things that you can do. And so that's really your, your feature space. I mean, you can also look at someone's profile. You can also look, as, as we just did, the actual URLs that are in the tweets. But we want to really understand kind of what's the behavior, uh, how are legitimate users uh, using this network, and then kind of how are illegitimate users uh, using it. And is there an opportunity uh, to build out uh, reputation? Is there an opportunity to, based on that uh, behavior, actually separate out, this, separate out this set and build out user reputation? Right, so there's certainly uh, a fair amount of work on doing kind of content-based classification. But if you think about like what happened in the email world, you know, everybody was doing kind of content-based classification. Everybody was doing Bayesian. Everybody was doing regexes and so forth. And then kind of the world looked up and realized, wait a second, there's a, a small set of good senders, and then there's this big set of bad guys. So we can actually use the reputation or the behavior of this particular IP address uh, to classify them and make a decision before I accept their mail. So, you know, in my mind, that's kind of the thing that, that saved email. I mean, it got us 95, 99% catch rates. And so, kind of one of our, our uh, goals here is to understand you know, is there the potential for the same type of classification uh, for social networks? To be able to take those users and without looking at their profile, without waiting to look at the content that they posted, uh, be able to build some user reputation and, and, and classify them. So when we dug into the different networks, if you look, dug into Twitter, it's a great example because, I mean, because the API is so open, uh, it, you know, gives us the ability to easily ask questions. Uh, but on the other side, it also gives the attackers the uh, ability to kind of also easily create lots of accounts and also easily inject lots of content for, for uh, you know, very low cost in terms of computing and, and bandwidth. So, you know, one of the things that we looked at, I mean, we have about a little over 25 million uh, Twitter accounts that we've analyzed. So you think about the, the whole set of over 100 million Twitter accounts that exist. Uh, we have access to over uh, 25 million of those that we've examined. So, you know, a pretty substantial uh, sample or, or subset of the Twitter universe. So uh, after looking at that, you know, one of the things that we, one of the first questions that we wanted to ask was kind of what's an uh, actual Twitter user? You know, what's a true Twitter user? Who uses Twitter in here? Um, I probably should ask who doesn't? Uh, so most people. So now let's see if, you know, the people in this room are, are true Twitter users or not. And, you know, the, we set the bar pretty low. We say, hey, a true Twitter user is somebody that has sent at least 10 tweets, they have at least 10 people following them, and they're following at least 10 people. It's a pretty low bar for you guys that have actually used the network. But what we saw is only 29% of the accounts on the network meet that criteria. So if you think about it, you know, 71% of the accounts are on Twitter really aren't using it. So, you know, that was kind of this, this first thing that we noticed. I mean, the vast majority of the network is, is not using it. The, if you look at it a little more closely, I mean, what we saw is if you look at how many followers each account has. The point here is, you know, 16% of the accounts have no followers. So you think about that. Basically, one in every six accounts that's on the network, nobody's listening to them, right? <laughs> if you think about it, you know, over half of the network, 52% of the network, have less than five followers. So a couple people are listening, but not many people care. Right? But, you know, it's interesting that only 9% of the network has over 100 followers. So the very kind of small set of the overall population that are kind of people are kind of tuning into and listening to what they're saying. So that's kind of one feature. So the, what, what's funny is it seems like that, uh, that Twitter's become high school again. That, you know, you have your clicks of people that know, know, know like five people, then there's people that everybody know. Exactly. Exactly. So what happens is, you know, that looks at kind of who's following. The, the thing we looked at next is how many people are you following? And so the point here, again, out of all the accounts that are on Twitter, 19% of them aren't following anybody. They went on, they created an account, and they don't care to listen to anyone. You know, so one in five accounts following nobody. There's only 10% of the accounts that are, are following more than, than 100 people. It's only 10% of the people that are listening to a stream that's kind of interesting enough to kind of actually pay attention around the clock. The next thing that we looked at was kind of more interesting, the relationship between those two numbers. You know, if you think of a normal social network, you're kind of following the same number of people that are following you. You think about Facebook, MySpace, it's a mutual relationship. It's kind of a two-way connection. Where in Twitter, you have this opportunity to have it one way. And so what we saw is that 55% of the network is actually using it with a kind of almost a two-way graph where they have roughly the same number of people following them as they're following. You know, we, plus or minus five is the, the criteria window that we use. So 55% of the network is kind of using it like a normal social network. What we saw is that, you know, 13% have more followers than they have, uh, people are, they're following. The other side is, you know, 32% of the network is following more people. So it really shows that about half the network are, are using it like friends. There's about 13% uh, that are celebrities. 
and then there's about 30% that are uh, consumers of, of content. Uh, uh, so one thing we want to look at was, okay, how many of these are real accounts? How many of these are legitimate people and legitimate accounts? So we look to examine this thing that we call the Twitter crime rate. And the Twitter crime rate is the percent of accounts every month that are created and then suspended. And these are suspended by, by Twitter. So these obviously aren't all the accounts that are doing things that are malicious, but at least a measure of over time how many accounts were created, uh, doing malicious or uh, misuse, and then kicked off the network. So if you look back since the beginning of the network, so this top left view is a view of since the beginning of the network, the growth of the network. Um, so this is the user growth of, net of Twitter since 2006. You know, one of the interesting things that we saw is there's this, this red carpet error. If you look at from November of 08 to April of 09, what happened is, you know, all the celebrities came. So if you look at the top 100 people on Twitter today, 50% of them joined in the same six month period. So, you know, the Ashton Kutchers, the Kim Kardashians, the, you know, Diddy's, the, all of the world, all joined in the six month period. If you look at what it did to the growth rate of qu Twitter, it went from 2% to 20% a month in that six month period. So what happened there is we know kind of where the users go, the, the, the attackers go. So this looks at the Twitter crime rate since the beginning of the network. So since 2006, when the network first started, there was 1% of the uh, accounts that were created any given month that were suspended or kicked off by the Twitter. You look at 2007, it went up to 1.7%. You know, 2008 went to 2.2%. Uh, in the middle of this red carpet era, it increased 60% to, to 3%. But four months later, the crime rate jumped to 12%. Right, so one in every eight accounts that were created on this network were being kicked off. And again, these are only the ones that were being found. So it, it, it kind of simmered back down as the, the user growth simmered down. And so if you look at what we've seen so far this year, there's basically, uh, it's gone from 2% uh, to 1% and fluctuated in that range. So the average this year is 1.6% of the accounts that are created in any given month are being kicked off for, for misuse or inappropriate activities. And again, these are only the ones that, that are identified uh, successfully. So we want to understand that better, kind of what are the behaviors and properties of these types of accounts. So one of the things that we looked at is we look back at this friend follow delta. This friend follow delta, remember, was kind of the difference between the number of people you follow and how many people are following you. And the thing that we notice here is that the attackers are using pretty aggressive uh, kind of recruitment activity uh, to get a higher number of followers. And so their delta uh, is higher. So what you see here in the green space is the delta for legitimate accounts. So on either side, people that have more followers and people that have more friends. But for the suspended accounts, you see a very a much higher delta because either they have successfully created a higher number of followers or they're still in the process of following people so those people can follow them back and so they have a higher number of friends. And so it was a pretty interesting attribute to use uh, to get some separation. The other thing that we looked at to get some separation is this number that we call the tweet number. And the tweet number is, is, is pretty simple math. It's how many days have, your network, uh, have you been on the network uh, and uh, we divide by how many tweets you've sent. So it's basically on average how many tweets uh, have you sent since you joined Twitter. And so for example, you know, my tweet number happens to be like 1.8. And, you know, I think Dave's is like, what, 3? Uh, 3.2. Uh, so it's, it's interesting. I know some friends, uh, a couple of you guys in the room whose tweet number is 40. You know, 40. So you're like tweeting like every 15 minutes in a work day. And, you know, I'm like, wow, that's pretty high. You're kind of annoying. <laughs> right? Uh, but <laughs> then there are some, you know, other accounts, if you look on this, that are actually tweeting uh, 100 times a day. You think a hundred times a day, but it's only you know 0.19 percent of the population. So you know it seems like okay, it's only a small number of people, 0.19 percent of the population. But what happens if you think of that 0.19 percent of 50 million users? You're talking about a couple hundred thousand users. Now you talk about a couple hundred thousand users tweeting at least a hundred times a day. You're, you're talking about you know 19 million uh, tweets out of 50 million. You're talking about 38 percent of all of the traffic on Twitter. So over a third of the traffic on Twitter being generated by this 0.19 percent of the population. So we thought this was a pretty interesting, interesting attribute. So what we did from there is kind of really looked into uh, how can we begin to build some, some level of reputation by, by coupling these features together. Coupling together this friend follower delta uh, along with this tweet number. And as we did it, we, we got some interesting uh, separation or interesting clusters of, of user types. Uh, so I think David will uh, step us through a few of those. So uh, this is a friend follower delta on the positive side, which means that there's, uh, ge there's generally a lot more people uh, following them than they're following. And you know, the, the usual suspects are there, Fox News. Uh, it's, not, it's funny to note that number three, number four, and number five are, are that Bieber kid. Uh, and they're, you know, they're, at least Miley Cyrus makes it on the, uh, on the, the top list there. So when, the, when you go from you know, the friend follower delta you know, uh, 
at like 119,000 down to like you know in the 4,000, 5,000 range, you, you get people like I skeet and tweet 